Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today let's talk about finding the inverse of the matrix A if the inverse exists. Um, so first thing is that we can check the determinant for the matrix because if the determinant is zero, then the inverse does not exist. So in that case, then we are just going to say that the inverse does not exist. So we do not have to do any work for finding the, the inverse. Okay, so now uh, how do we find the determinant? So let's just recall. Okay, so let's just recall that over here. So the determinant of A. Now we can see that uh, A is A, B, C, D for a 2 by 2 matrix. Now that should be A. What that is equal to is that the main diagonal entries multiply together. So A times D and then minus the other diagonal entries multiply together. So the B and the C. So now let's try to find the determinant of A here. So determinant of A here is equal to what? It's equal to now the A and the D multiply together. So we get negative 6 times negative 10 and then minus 4 times 15. What is negative 6 times negative 10? That is 60. And then what is 4 times 15? That's also 60. And so we are going to get 0. So what happens? The inverse does not exist. So the inverse of A does not exist. Now, I still want to try to do some more operations on this matrix in uh, and show you what actually happens when it comes to doing that process and see uh, why we will not be able to obtain the identity matrix on the left side. So now let's try to do the process of row operations by first joining the I on the right side of our matrix A. So now what really happens is that we can try to do some row operations and turn this left side here into an I. Okay, so what we can do is that we can actually, we can start just try to deal with fractions. So all we need to do, okay, is to reduce this. So we can do something like uh, negative one over two, row one. Okay, and then we are going to get what? We are going to get three and then negative two. And then now, of course, we are going to have fractions on this side. So we get negative 1 over 2 and then 0. What about the second row? We can also do the same thing, but actually just leave it. So we have 15 and then negative 10 and then 0, 1. You probably can tell that we are not going to be able to turn this into the identity matrix because when we do one more row operation, we are going to get a whole... Uh, we are going to get zero for those two entries right here. And then you may say, why is that? It's really because this second row right here, not including the right side, that just those two entries are really just what multiples of those two entries right here, respectively. Okay, so now let's see. So we can do negative five row one plus row two, change row two. You can see what really happens already. Okay, so what happens? Multiply by negative 5. We get negative 15 adding to 15, so we're going to get 0. Negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. 10 minus 10, we also get 0 here. And then what about this one? This one is 5 over 2, so just 5 over 2. And then 0 plus 1, so we are just going to get 1 here. So now here's the problem. Look at that. There is no way that we can turn this into an I, right? So you can see that... Um, the matrix is not invertible, or we can say that the matrix is singular, so the inverse does not exist. Okay, so that's it for this problem. We are going to find the inverse of a 3 by 3 uh, non-singular matrix next time. Okay, so...